That's what I'm going to say. All right. So today we're going to be doing topic 2.7, which is slavery and American law, slave codes, and landmark cases. Um, this will be very, very legal. So take notes on anything you don't know. But remember, this whole lesson is still available for you in our LMS and CTLS, okay? All right. So the learning target today is students will understand the legal foundations and implications of slavery in American law. Is that right, got me on that? I will be drawing on some pre-understanding of U.S. history, some pre-understanding of U uh, U.S. government, because if you're taking U.S. government this semester, you should at least got to the Constitution by now. Um, but if not, I will be discussing it with you regardless, okay? Okay. Well, you might get some of a prelude on these sections here. So just follow me along. If you have any kind of questions or concerns, let me know. I'll be calling popsicle sticks to help us read. So again, these are your styles of notes that you're taking on your butcher paper. Now, remember, I have y'all doing collaborative notes because that way y'all can look at each other's notes. Does that make sense to everybody? That way you can compare what other people got. So when we get done with our notes and we take it in this class setting like right now, just take a picture for you all can look at your notes. So you got either Cornell, Outline, Mind Map, or Z Notes in this case here. All right. So study um, skills that we mainly focus on here will be, as always, source analysis, right? So if you notice at this point, we're done with unit one, now we're in 2.7. We're almost at that halfway point of unit two. We always got to know our sources. Because guess what's going to be on the AP exam? Sources. sources. And in your source book, guess what I'm forcing you to do? Analyze your what? Sources. So know these sources. That makes sense? Um, when we get to the unit two exam, part A and part B, because I broke it up, it's going to be mainly focused on sources. And then, of course, always apply your knowledge and understanding. Okay. Let's get into it. And forgive me, this is where the law side of me is going to come out, so please forgive me. Everybody got me on that? All right. The first section, the first, let me get someone to read the learning objective for 27A. Chantel, can you read that for us? Explain how American law impacted the lives and citizenship rights of the slaves and free African Americans between the 17th and 19th century. So the 17th century is the 1600s. In the 19th century, 1800s. That's a pretty big gap, right? Yeah. Okay. So the first one we're going to look at is Article 1 and Article 4 of the United States Constitution. Is that right, clear there? Okay. So write these in your notes. And again, if you're doing Z notes, you're probably going to need some room, but really listen to me. But again, I'm with the idea that y'all have some background on this. Article 1 of the Constitution deals solely on Congress, the legislative branch who makes all of our laws. I am recording this for y'all to have the ability to go back and look at this. Article 4 is all about states' rights. Y'all with me so far? And if you're reading this PowerPoint, you probably know I'm not saying nothing on the PowerPoint yet, am I? <laughs> all right. So now both these sections refer to slavery, but avoid using the term slave. Nowhere in our founding document, the Constitution, will you ever see the word slave. Does that make sense to everybody? And that was being very tactical and smart by the framers in that sense. Now, these terms did come up when you got to the 13th Amendment because it was abolishing slavery. Is there got me on that? So now until you got to the 13th Amendment, after the Civil War, did you finally see the word slavery? But it was amending earlier documents, i.e. the Three-Fifths Compromise found in Article 1. Okay? Speaking of Three-Fifths Compromise, let's go ahead and look at Article 1, Section 2. Is everybody with me so far? Y'all yeah. got to stop me because this is where I'm literally caught off my head because this is just what I know. With that being said, let me get someone to help me read. Article 1, Section 2, let me get B. Go ahead and read Article 1, Section 2. Can I give y'all a heads up here? Do not try to write down everything I got here. Put in your own words, okay? Y'all got me there? Because this is what I'm saying. Listen, everybody look at me. Let me get eyes on me. I want y'all to see me and hear me say this. The Constitution is a good primary document that everybody can use, no matter what your topic is. Do I got me on that? The Constitution is a great primary document that you all can use both in class, on project, and AP exam. And somebody asked me the reason why. Because the Constitution is up to interpretation. The way you interpret it is the way you can use it, okay? All right, go ahead and read Article 1, Section 2. Direct taxes shall be appointed among the several states according to their respective numbers. It shall be determined by adding the whole number of free persons including those bond to service for a term of year and excluding Indians not taxed. All right. So the number of persons, is everybody got me on that? 
They are for me so far. Number of persons. Bond to service for a term of years. Is everybody got me on so far on this? I'm breaking it down. And then it said exclude the Indians. So here's the goal. Total numbers of persons, even those in addition servitude, people in addition to people on contract, and not Indians. If you're looking at the founding of the country, on people left over and not wording is going to be enslaved blacks. You ever got me on that? So in that case there, they're calling them numbers of persons. Does that make sense? This is referring to the three-fifths compromise. For every five slaves, three will be counted for the idea of representation in the Congress. Is everybody good so far? I pray that y'all got over this in U.S. history. Okay. All right. Now, let's go to Article 1, Section 9. Kumba, can you read Article 1, Section 9? Please make sure you read pretty loudly. The migration of importation of such persons as any of the states now existing shall be proper to admit, shall not be prohib prohibited by the Congress prior to the year 1808, but a tax or duty may be imposed on such importation, not exceeding $10 for each person. So, Article 1, Section 9 is saying that Congress cannot pass a law until the year 1808 to end the slave trade. Does everybody follow me there? Again, this I'm not making this up. This is literally from the Constitution. Does everybody follow? So, we have three-fifths compromise, and we can't end the slave trade to 1808. We good so far? Yes or no? Now, we go on to Article 9. Excuse me, Article 4, Section 2. Um, can I get the walk? Can you read that part for us? No person held to service or labor in one state under the laws thereof escaping into another shall, in consequence of any law or regulation therein, be discharged from such service or labor. All right, so in other words, they're saying here no person held in service or labor, and I'll and they aka what they're referring to, no slave in one state under the law. Escape it to another, meaning you did what? But as a slave, what do you call when a slave? Runaway slave. So now this is a fugitive slave law. I'm going to talk about runaway slaves. Everybody clear there? So now remember, Article 4 deals with what again? What does Article 4 deal with? I said it at the beginning of the discussion. The states. Is everybody clear there? It's all about the, the rights and the laws of the states. What we're saying right here. In Article 4, Section 2, is that no slave can run away. They're right with me so far on that. We talk about runaway slaves. Everybody follow? Now, let's go to now the 13th Amendment, which is the big one here. Everybody with me? Now, the articles were amended, excuse me, the articles were ratified in 1789. That's when all the 13 colonies became official states. Is that right, there? Every amendment. Now, it's changing something in those articles. Does that make sense? Here I follow. The 13th Amendment came after the sin of a war when they freed all the slaves. Is clear there? Yes? Now, let me get KP to read the 13th Amendment and read pretty loud for me. A.K.A. Slavery is illegal except if you're in prison. Which again, it goes back to everything we've been talking about, right? I'm really reviewing it. So we ended slavery. Is everybody got me there? Except as a punishment for a crime. Not until really 2020 did you start seeing states. Even Florida, for example, has a law where if you are being seen as a criminal, you can now vote. Previously, once you were criminalized, you lost your right to vote. Is everybody got me on that? It's only a new thing that kind of got stopped, all right? One thing that did come out in 2020, a whole lot of states changed that law, including Florida. And I say Florida because people see Florida all day now. Florida was one of, that's a big state. Is everybody got me on that? That's a big hub. So then this is why when you saw in 2020, you had so many people voting. More people could vote. Is that right, clear? Because if you was deemed a criminal, that's a lot of people, right? In most states, they couldn't vote. Now they could. Is it right clear? That's just one example of what this did. Then we talked about the chain gangs earlier, right? We talked about the prison, and this all leads into the idea of going we'll quote the prison industrial complex too. I watched the video, but I didn't truly understand. Well, the idea of the chain, well, it goes, so I can explain that now with the chain gang. 
singing the heavy like something. Okay, well, let's come back. Let's come back for a second. The idea of the chain game, the singing goes back to slavery. Is that right, clear there? That was the whole point of that. They are singing a message that maybe not everybody's gonna understand. But the idea of the chain game goes back to the 13th Amendment. At the end of slavery in a, in the Civil War, the all the plantations just disappear. Do you still have plantations? Yeah. They, were they still need the cotton? Yeah. Do they still need people to work on the cotton fields? Yeah. That's what did it. Is that right, Clitter? You still satisfy that need saying, now if I can say you're a, a, a criminal, now I can put you back into legal slavery, which is prisons, and now you can work for basically free. And everybody in here, we know somebody's in jail, and we know they don't make no money. The share, but then we, I'm gonna go to that. Now, that, now here's the problem. A lot of people remember we talked about the second um, domestic slave trade, right? Or the second middle passage, right? Domestic slave trade. That's one element that got people working, right? The other part is just getting you criminalized for chunk of jobs charges. So let's move fast to the 20th century. I see your hand. This is why you have a difference between crack cocaine and cocaine as far as how much time you get in jail. Because typically, cocaine costs a lot more money. Poor people got crack. Guess who gets more jail time? And again, you go back into the 13th Amendment. Is that right with me so far on that? So that's where, then you also had a system of share problem, which we'll get to later. Share problem. So in a, in a uh, end of uh, reconstruction, we still got those plantations, right? If the only thing you ever did is your whole life was farm, can you really get another job? So then you have your old, think about this, think about the psychology of this. You have your old owner who sells you a pile of land. Is that right, got me on that? And then they sell you materials. Can you read or write? Do you know what you signed off for the contract? So then you become a share problem because you're sharing the land and you get a certain amount of those crops. Here's the problem. You think they ever got paid frequently correctly? And how we're going to check them? Because guess what? No one can read or write. My dad was a son of a sharecropper. He did not pay off my grandfather's debt to like the 1990s. Is there a got me on that? So my dad was literally a sharecropper. And he didn't pay off my grandfather's debt until the 90s. Because the system was so jacked up. Is that right, Paul? I have land in Mississippi that we don't use because that was our land. It is just blank. There's nothing there, and I probably would never sell it, even when my parents passed, because that land still has significance to my family because that's the land we worked on. That makes sense to everybody? Okay. What is your statement of question now? Because I, I went a lot deeper. I wanted to say that not why they're getting the extra Yeah, so the question was now talk about talk about the war on drugs. The war on drugs did also criminalize people even more. Um, it, yeah, Reagan and Nixon are always the proponents, but we'll talk about the war on drugs too when we get to that. Huh? Yeah, Clinton, you had an aspect of, like, every president did it. So, I mean, we're not really going to say it. even, like, everybody has some element because no one really stopped it. <laughs> but every, and then here's the thing, only one president actually went to a prison system, but that's another topic. That is something we'll get into in Unit 4, though. Everybody got me on that? Yes. Go ahead. Real quick, huh? That's all controversial. We don't, I mean, I don't I mean, community service is literally what it says. You're working in the community. So, that's different. Community service is so like, that's 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 different. That's two different things. That's like community service. All right, everybody, if you can hear me, say yes. Yes. All right, so we're gonna watch this video on um, the three fifths compromise. But well, let me ask you this question: Who does not know about three fifths compromise in the class? Okay. Raise your hand. You have never heard about three fifths compromise. That was in that was a U.S. history standard. That's scary. We've heard it. She probably forgot about it. Okay. But I just know that. Like, All right. So, no, 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 what we're going to do. Everybody, join in. That. Make sure you're in the near pod. Let's watch the video, answer the questions. Add to your notes as you feel is needed. Is that right, clear there? Does that make sense, everybody? All right. Let's go. I said go. It's supposed to start on, the, on my end.
All right, you got 30 seconds to answer this question. Don't say it out loud, just answer and go make this say. Hit the refresh button. And you're in this code here, right? Come on now. All right, that's 30 seconds. So you were in BXHQG. I hit the refresh button one more time on your browser. And again, like I always say, Every question that I put in one of these videos is something I would add to my notes in some kind of words. Everybody got me on that? Because I mean, I'm stopping for a reason. Did it come up now? Okay, so I'm making no note of it, all right? So you'll be fine. All right, keep listening. All right, 30 seconds again. Starting now. Is it now? Yeah, just put in your notes.
All right. That is 30 seconds. <clears throat> Still good so far, y'all? All right, 30 seconds again, all right? Go ahead and give me your answers again. Make sure you have them added to your notes as needed. All right, that is time. All right. Finish listening, folks. All right, any questions? No? All right. Okay. Everybody take a second. Go give somebody a high five that you're not sitting next to. So everybody get up, give somebody you're not sitting next to a high five real quick. 
Can I ask you to roll team because y'all gotta do a collaborative note? Come back here. I came over here to do my five Oh, I think I have to get some five. All right. Let's get into some essential knowledge. What? Now let me say this to you. Um, if you're, hey y'all, listen up. If you're doing Z notes, don't just say worry about your um, picture. That's your notes. Okay. All right, let's get back into it. Slave labor and American law. First off. What is chattel slavery? Let me get. Wait, can you read what child slavery is? Everybody focus, let's go. What's child slavery? I'll go ahead. All right, that's it. So, chattel slavery is race based. Is everybody clear there? Is everybody follow so far? Lifelong inheritable. Meaning, if your grandfather was a slave, guess what you are? If your great, 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 great grandfather was a slave, guess what you are? Okay? You have to understand that because that's how the laws were made. Does that make sense to everybody so far? Okay. All right. Then, and this also included freedom of movement conjugations, possessing weapons, and then also um, wearing fine fabrics, among other activities. So in other words, if you was deemed a slave, you got treated as such. Does that make sense to everybody? There's no if, answer, buts about it. Yes, real quick. This like, sounds like a felony. Because like, being a felon, you can't own a gun. But it's not race-based. Well, it's not race -based. It's not inheritable. And it is not a lifelong court condition. So you have a time. So it's no, they're not lifelong felons or not, unless you get life in prison or something. What you got? But that's different. So I mean, that goes into the other parts. But again, being a felon is not race based. There's every you do on this. Everybody know everybody's in jail, right? Is everybody clear on that? Like every race, gender, creed is in jail. Like you have at least some sector of all that. So that means. It's not. Child slavery saying predominantly all the slaves were what? Black. So that's straight up on that one. All right. Let me get someone to read that last bullet point. Let me get Liam. Can you read the last bullet point for us? Yeah. No, well, no. Where it says these regulations. All right, so this was not a very American thing. This was if you own slave thing. Is it right clear there? So this, they had this in Brazil, they had this in the West Indies, they had this all over the world. In other words, if you own slaves, you understood this idea of child slavery. Is there right clear with me so far? So again, this whole presentation is in CTLS and it's being recorded. All right, let's keep going. All right, so now let's get more into what we're talking about, getting into South Carolina slave code. So let me first get Mars. Can you read just the first bullet point? Slave code and other laws keep racial divides in American society by reserving opportunities for upward mobility and protection from All right, so these slave codes made it difficult to have any kind of over progress, meaning you're going to be subjected to the lowest level of the hierarchy as far as our capitalist system. Is it right clear there? You didn't have a chance to get up. Now, because child slavery was very much black white, if you was white, you was not necessarily a slave. Is it right clear there? If you was black, yes, you was in servitude. Now, let's look, go ahead and look at South Carolina's. Uh, slave code in 1740. Now, remember, 1740, blowing it up a little bit. In 1740, is that right with me on this so far? Yeah. South Carolina is not an American state. Y'all follow? 
This is still a colony. Is that right, Father? Okay. Now, I highlighted a couple things. The first blue says to go out of the limits of the, what? Said town. Meaning you cannot leave that town. You're stuck there. Does that make sense? Is that right, Father, so far? Yeah. So if you was born in Atlanta, could you leave Atlanta? No. You're stuck there. Could you leave the plantation? That's in red. No, you stayed on that plantation. So you, this is why you have a system where some slaves never do anything outside of their little farm or plantation. And then the last one, without a letter. If you do not have a document saying you can move, you did not move. And be clear, sometimes even that letter got questioned. Everybody got me on that? Here's another added element to this. You do know you had kids that was playing with the master's kids, right? Mm -hmm. Those master's kids might be doing Bible lessons or be doing reading lessons, right? So guess what that kid learned how to do? Read, read and write. But you cannot let the master know you know how to read and write. I, now, think about the whole psyche. I'm going to let you be here while I teach my kid how to read and write because I don't feel like you're smart enough or you even humanistic enough to understand it either. They obviously did, but I also was a problem too. This is something you can see with Kizzy in their, the root story of Kuta Kente. Is everybody following me on that? Everybody with me so far? Okay. <clears throat> That's literally what you said. All right, let's go to 27B. Can I get um Elon, can you read the new learning target for us? All right, so let's talk about how they wrote slave codes because of resistance, okay? So you have South Carolina slave code in 1740. Y'all still with me? That was a response to Stonewall's Rebellion. That's all you need to write. South Carolina's 1740 slave code was a response to Stonewall's Rebellion. Y'all still with me? Yes. Now, who remembers what Stonewall Rebellion was from U.S. history? Some of y'all took AP and honors, y'all probably wish be answering right now. But if not, y'all got technology in front of you, right? Look it up. What was Stono's Rebellion? Are you positive you know the answer? Okay, then don't say. No, no, no. If you don't, you're not absolutely positive, don't say. What was Stono's Rebellion? It was a slave revolt where? In South Carolina. So in 1740, we don't talk about this a lot, okay? In 1740, you already had a slave revolt going on in South Carolina. This predated Nat Turner's rebellion. Does that make sense? No. Nope. Nope. That, that's John Brown. We're not even there yet. This predates that. Okay. So the 1740 code classified all black people and the indigenous community. Who's the indigenous community? Native, Native Americans. Americans. So if you was brown color, is everybody got me on that? If you was brown complexion. You are presumed to be what? A slave. Yes, everybody is brown. If you had any melanin based on the 1740 South Carolina Slave Code, you were perceived a slave. Is everybody following me so far? Okay. Kiki, can you read the next one for me? Since the, seven, the South Carolina, the second, this, this, okay, the second one? Yeah, right here. Uh, South Carolina 1740 Slave Code. Prohibited enslaved people from gathering, running, running away, learning to read, or rebel. Oh, you already good. Yep, keep going. It condemned to death any enslaved persons that tried to defend themselves from attack by a white person. So, a year later, they said, guess what? If you're gathering, if you're drumming, listen to that, the drumming. We've been talking about the drum this whole class, right? So people are doing music. you got to talk about the drum. The drum was a method of communication. We talk about that in slave ships, yes? And now they said if you call drumming, you're going to be in trouble. Because they understood this is how y'all communicate. They get smarter and smarter. This is 1740. Of course, running away, learning to read. We already talked about that a second ago, as far and also rebellion. Now, this is a catch, too. If you defend yourself, what's going to happen to you? Condemned to death. You condemned to death. Meaning, even if you don't die doing it, we're going to hang you before you do it. In other words, no type of rebellion. Does everybody got me on that? Yeah. And again, this is this predates even the Constitution being written, which makes you understand why the Constitution was written the way it was written. Real quick. I was going to say, is this also like the era where they were ending the ghost dance revolution from the like, Native people? I'm not sure. Banning drumming and stuff? 
The drummer was very African based. So I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I have to look at that. I'm not sure about okay. that part. All right. Anybody got melon? Are they? Do they have any kind of color? Yes. So what about like light skin people? Again, it's not a what if. It's this is the, you gotta be very clear on this. One percent drop root. That's what it comes from. Any any if you got any kind of if you have woolly hair like in one percent. That's what it comes from. Does that make sense? And it's not a question. That's that's how it was. How it is in some places still. Malik, can you read the last part about the legal codes? Legal codes and landmark cases of insurance to define the status of African Americans by denying them citizenship rights and protection. All right, you can stop there. So now, legal codes and other cases, like what we talk about with these kind of codes here, right? It made it very hard for blacks to have citizenship. The great example of that is the Dred Scott decision. And again, I'm assuming y'all remember Dred Scott from U.S. history. Okay? Quick question. Were there any, like, actual Indian slaves? Yes. Because they would so you have mixing. Uh, the question, like, was there any, like, native? Before they enslaved Africans, they tried to enslave the natives. That didn't work because you tried to enslave me. I like, some Indian. No, um, I mean, not as far as I know. No. Because no. remember, they were trying to find India. The reason Columbus found here on accident because he was trying to get the Indians. It, it, and he thought his Fayona was India. That's a long, that's a long ways to get somebody here. <laughs> okay. All right. So Dred Scott is an example of where you have all this kind of coming to play at. So let's keep going. You said why? Why did why did the why did the white No, we're talking about like he's there's a question about people from India, like Indians. You know why why did they fail to enslave Native people up here? Because you're trying to enslave somebody that's living in their home. How are you going to enslave somebody that I know the air better than you? I'm going to run away a lot faster. Yeah. Well, and they had to make Okay. I love the conversation, but we got limited time. <laughs> so I'm sorry, y'all. I'm so sorry. All right. Here's Dred Scott. We're going to ask you a couple questions here. So listen up. All right, um, we're not gonna do that. Don't worry about it. Keep going. All right, 
So let's talk about um, the 1740 code a little bit more. So it updated the response of enslaved resistance from the Stolen Rebellion. Can I get... Malik, can you read A for us, please? The 1740 code classified all black people in the indigenous communities that did not submit to the colonial government as non-subjects and presumed enslaved people. Okay, let me get... Kiki, can you read the next paragraph? Um, South Carolina's 1746 code prohibited enslaved people from gathering during the Condemned to death by any enslaved person that tries to defend themselves from attack by a white person. Yeah, just reviewing what we talked about, right? And then it condemned. So again, could you defend yourself? No. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so we talked about this this source already, right? Remember, I broke this down. Yes. Okay. Any questions about this source? Y'all, let me say this again. I'm telling you, remember this from this day until we take the test in May. Does everybody got me on that? If you use law, that is always a great primary source. Is that right clear? Any kind of legal doctrine, i.e. the Constitution, i.e. slave codes, any of those are great. So people that's doing music, I mean, it's easy to talk about how some rappers are now getting prosecuted because of their lyrics, the legality of that. That's still a great topic to be discussed. Is that right clear there? If you use legal documents, you are always going to score well because it's an open interpretation. Does that make sense to everybody? That is a biased legal mind talking to you, but still the same thing. Yes. All right. Now, we're going to have the Louisiana Slave Code. Is everybody with me on this so far? Okay. So we're about to go look at the Louisiana Slave Code. We already talked about Article 1, Article 2. Excuse me, Article 1 is Article 4, yes? We did that at the beginning of the class. Um, we also, now, let's go ahead and look at the Dred Scott decision. Add this into your notes, okay? We'll go back and look at the, um, I forgot the code, but I know I put it in your source book, okay? All right. Excerpts of Dred Scott's plea. Let me get, B, can you read that one for us? Read us the Dred Scott part. That child's sleep. Go ahead and wake him up. And then let me go ahead and get no walk. Can you read Dred Scott, please? Um, direct taxes shall be apportioned among the several states according to. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Scott's extended stay in Illinois. Oh, uh, Scott's extended stay in Illinois, a free state, gave him the legal standing to making a to make a claim for freedom. That's all. That's it. So because Dred Scott, Dred Scott is was his slaves. Everybody clear there. His master moved to Illinois. Is everybody follow me there? Illinois was free. Dred Scott made the argument because I'm in a free state, I should now be free. Is that right clear there? Yes or no? Yeah. All right. Let's read what Justice Taney. Now, Chief Justice Taney, this is the Supreme Court head um, justice. Is that right clear there? All right. Let me get. Oh, she's not here. Oh, I got it. Kumba, no, she's the bad Chantel, can you read that part for us? What did Justice Taney say? Um, upon these considerations, it is the opinion of the court that the act of Congress which prohibited a citizen from holding and owning property of this kind of territory of the United States north of the line. Darren, 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 sorry. Mention is not warranted by the Constitution and is therefore void. Stop real quick. So what they're saying here is that Congress already passed the law. Is everybody got me on that? Y'all with me so far? Yeah. That prohibited citizens from holding and owning property in the territory that's free. Is everybody got me on that? Is everybody follow me? Yeah. And they said that that is void. And that neither Dred Scott himself nor his family were made free by being carried into this territory. So just because you moved north to a free territory, was he actually free? That was the whole argument of Dred Scott. And then they also go to the idea that Dred Scott wasn't even considered a person because he was considered property because slaves were property. Everybody got me on that? Mm -hmm. And it's a bad analogy, and I'm not trying to offend no one, 
But Dre Scott has as much rights as the seats that y'all sitting in right now. Because again, he was what? Property. Everybody clear there? Everybody follow? Okay. So that's what the Dre Scott decision was talking about. Um, almost done with this part of the nearby. All right. So this is what you need to make sure you make note on for the Louisiana code specifically because that's what y'all got to read. Is there got me on that? Y'all with me so far? It contains restrictions very similar to those in South Carolina. Most of the southern states that own slaves have very similar slave codes. That makes sense, everybody? I gave y'all the whole Louisiana code because I want y'all to read the whole code. But make sure you know. Break it down. Don't just read the thing to read it. You got to literally read so much, chunk it, and read so much, chunk it, read so much, and chunk it. Is everybody follow me there? Does that make sense, everybody? When we get the day, this will be some days for warm ups. We're going to be working on our source book. The first one we're going to work on is going to be the slave code. Um, along with greater emphasis on what? Y'all look at the screen. What did it say? Greater emphasis on what? It's, I'm reading the sentence. Catholic, Catholic instruction. Is it right clear there? So, uh, Louisiana, if you know anything about Louisiana, it's very, very, very deep Catholic region, right? It comes back from the French. Is it right clear there? So they saying, we really going to push this idea of being Catholic, being Catholic, Catholic all right? And regulations that acknowledge the possibility of marriage between enslaved people, but forbid interracial relationships. Is that right clear there? Yeah. You can marry each other, but unless you try to marry someone outside your race, though. This idea of, of uh, interracial marriage is still fairly new, like the 70s new, <laughs> okay? It's a new situation. It was condemned. Dred Scott decision overturned the Reconstruction Amendments of 13, 14, 15 Amendments of the United States Constitution. Uh, and then in 1860, black men could only vote in five of the six New England states. Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and where? Yeah. New Hampshire. Remember, 1860s after the Civil War. Is that right, got me so far? Yeah. Okay. All right. I appreciate y'all sitting through that 50 minutes. Um, I know it's hard to just sit there. We're not going to do the quiz because the quiz will be on what, 2-6 and what? 2-7. Two seven. Two we'll be doing 2-7 tomorrow. But now, let me make sure everybody understands what I, want, I need you to do. All right. Uh, this is CTLS, right? Yes, it is. Go to your source books. Does everybody, if you understand that, say yes. yes. Go to your source books. Okay. Go to your source book for 2.1 to 2.15. We need to go to the sources for 2.7. You understand that? Say yes. yes. Okay. Go to the sources for 2.7. So, it starts right here. Remember, this is the Louisiana Slave Code. I just gave you the background of what it is. Very similar to South Carolina, but adding more religion to it. Everybody got me on that? It's all I want you to do. Listen to me very closely. Y'all ready? Yes. Do an A-E-I-O-U for this um, source. A is giving me adjectives. E is giving me emotion. I is telling me something interesting. O is something that makes you say O. Oh. And then U will be making something that makes you have a question that makes you say um. Is everybody got me on that? Give me all five vowels for this source as you go through it tonight. Does everybody make sense there? Yes. Okay. So again, I gave y'all the whole code, right? Yes. Let's just read through it and do what again? Yeah. So, actually, I lied to you. <laughs> two seven is two things, okay? First, you got the Louisiana Slave Code. That's the first two pages. Then the third page on slide 20, if you will, is going to be looking at Article 1 and our, uh, Article 1 of the Constitution and Article 4. We already did this, though, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. So, I don't want you to do that. We All I want y'all to do is the Slave Code, which is going to be... 18 and 19. All the other sources we did already. We did Dred Scott. All you need to do is 18 and 19. A E I O U on your own paper. We'll be ready to discuss when you walk in tomorrow. Okay. Is everybody clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Does everybody got that? Yes. 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 On paper. Adjective, emotion, interesting. Something that makes you say oh. And then you is going to be what again? Question. It's going to be a question. Something that makes you say um. That's all you're doing for that source. Only on page 18 and what? 19, that's all you got to do. Is everybody clear? Any questions on what y'all doing for these sources? No. All right.